Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, gathering people around the world, conversation about Monday through Friday, and my name is Dennis. I'm part of a, a team that comes to you Monday, Tuesday, and Friday of the week as part of the Bible Project. We're reading through the Bible. Now, uh, today we'll be continuing in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, but we've already been through the New Testament. We've been uh, started in the Old Testament and been up to, uh, we're in Ecclesiastes, but Psalms and Proverbs we finished uh, before. So we're now on Ecclesiastes going toward the end of the Old Testament. <clears throat> so I just want to welcome you. Uh, if you would, hashtag live watching this at 7 o'clock hour. Hashtag recorded if you're watching at any other time. And hashtag shared if you're putting this out on your social media page. You can hear my little dog here. She's, she's wanting to get over and get in the camera shot. This is Zara. Some of you know Zara. Some of you seen Zara. She's getting, this is as big as she's going to get. And she says hi. She's waiting on her mama to get in from, uh, from uh, Orange Theory. There we go. I knew how to think of it. So she's really wanting to be over here in the picture. But uh, again, thank you for being with me. If you see hearts and likes and you're new to the channel, that's to tell you good morning from everyone. Telling you good morning and uh, that we're glad to have you here. So I hope you've been enjoying all the Bible reading. Some of you have been here every time faithfully. Thank you for being here. Hope you've enjoyed this. I know I've enjoyed reading it. We're using the message version and it's just to get a different different perspective. I different, uh, hear it in a little different language, if you will, vernacular, or however you want to say that. <clears throat> we usually read for 15 minutes, thereabouts, plus or minus, depending on where the chapter's in. So, uh, I'm just letting everyone kind of get in here. I'm going to, let's see if I can see some people. I saw Sean Leonard there. She got to see Zara. Brandy Johnson, good morning. Anita Henson, yes, good to see you. Uh, I know I saw Juanita Bell on there, Anita Kay. So, uh, I, I can't read them all, but I'm, I'm reading some saying hashtag live and good morning. Ed Rose, Ed, thank you for being here. It was such a pleasure working with you this weekend. I'm sorry that I misjudged the distance back to the cafeteria. I didn't mean to lie to you, uh, but you got some help getting back there. And, uh, and thank you, Michelle, for helping assist Ed getting back there. And uh, we all had a good time and did a lot of work. Thank you guys for uh, being at Over Park with us and uh, getting everything ready for the go-karts that will be uh, the 17th. Some of you signed up. I'll be contacting you to uh, to help us with those go-karts. And I won't go any deeper into that, but it's just where we got snacks to the teachers twice a month. And uh, give them a little treat, a little something to brighten their day. And pray with them, too, at times. All right, guys, I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes. <clears throat> if you would, go ahead and turn... You're probably already there. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Pastor Brandy uh, got into that yesterday and got me all caught up to today. There it is. Chapter 2. All right, guys, get your Bibles. Uh, I'm using my iPad. I have an iPad 12.9 inch that I use for work. Some of us have the old, good old standard. Uh, Paper Bible. I love both. I love both. I like to use both. Use technology for for good things. Use it for good things and to help you uh, to get different versions. If you don't want to buy so many paperback or book versions, and you can get on uh, you you version you version. Uh, it's a Bible app on the on the internet, and you can find just about any version you want. So here we go, guys. Ecclesiastes chapter two. I said to myself, let's go for it. Experiment with pleasure. Have a good time. But there's nothing, there was nothing to it. Nothing but smoke. What do I think of the fun field life? Insane. I name, I name. My verdict on the pursuit of happiness, who needs it? With the help of a bottle of wine and all the wisdom I could muster, I tried my level best to penetrate the absurdity of life. I wanted to get a handle on anything useful we mortals might do during the years we spend on this earth. 
I never said no to myself. Well, I did great things, built houses, planted vineyards, designed gardens and parks, and planted a variety of fruit trees in them, made pools of water to irrigate the groves of trees. I bought slaves, male and female, who had children, giving me even more slaves. Then I acquired large herds and flocks, larger than any before in Jerusalem. I piled up silver and gold, loot from kings and kingdoms. I gathered a chorus of singers to entertain me with song, and most exquisite of, exquisite of all pleasures, voluptuous maidens for my bed. Oh, how I prospered. I left all my predecessors in Jerusalem far behind, left them behind in the dust. What's more, I kept a clear head through it all. Everything I wanted, to, wanted, I took. Never said no to myself. I gave in to every impulse and held back nothing. I sucked the marrow of pleasure out of every task. My reward to myself for a hard day's work. And then the heading for the next part of this chapter says, I hate life. Then I, go then I took a good look at everything I'd done. Looked at all the sweat and hard work, but when I looked, I saw nothing but smoke. Smoke and spitting in the wind. There was nothing to any of it. Nothing. And then I took a hard look at, at what's smart and what's stupid. What's left to do after you've been king? That's a hard act to follow. You just do what you can and that's it. But I did see that it's better to be smart than stupid. Just, to, just as light is better than darkness. Even so, though the smart ones see where, where they're going and the stupid ones grow up in the dark, they're all the same in the end. One fate for all, and that's it. When I realized that my fate's the same as the fool's, I had to ask myself, so why bother being wise? It's all smoke, nothing but smoke. The smart and the stupid both disappear out of sight. In a day or two, they're both forgotten. Yes, the smart and the stupid die, and that's it. I hate life as far as I can see. What happened, as far as I can see, what happens on earth is, is, is a bad business. It's smoke and spitting in the wind. I hate everything I'd accomplished and accumulated on this earth. I can't take it with me. No, I have to leave it to whoever comes after me, whether they're worthy or worthless, and who's to tell? They'll take over the earthly results of my intense thinking and hard work, smoke. So when I called it quits, gave up on anything that could be hoped for on this earth, that's when I called it quits, gave up anything that could be hoped for on this earth. What's the point of working your fingers to the bone if you hand over what you work for to someone who never lifted a finger for it? <sighs> Smoke, that's what it is. A bad business from start to finish. So what do you get from life? A life of hard labor. Pain and grief from dusk till dawn. Never a decent night's rest. Nothing but smoke. The best you can do with your life is have a good time and get by the best you can. <laughs> the way I see it, that's it. Divine faith. Whether we feast or fast, it's up to God. God may give wisdom and knowledge and joy to his favorites. But sinners are assigned a life of hard labor and end up turning their wages over to God's favorites. Nothing but smoke and spitting in the wind. Wow. All right, chapter 3. There's a right time for everything. Chapter, uh, verse 1 of chapter 3. There's an opportune time to do things. Things. A right time for everything on earth. A right time for birth and another for death. A right time to plant and another to reap. A right time to kill and another to heal. A right time to destroy and another to construct. A right time to cry and another to laugh. A time to lament and another to cheer. A right time to make love and another to abstain. A right time to embrace and another to part. A right time to search and another to count your losses. A right time to hold on and another to let go. A right time to rip out and another to mend. A right time to shut up and another to speak up. A right time to love and another to hate. A right time to wage war and another to make peace. But in the end, 
Does it really make a difference what anyone does? I've had a good look at what God has given us to do. Busy work, mostly. True, God made everything beautiful in itself and in its time. But he's left us in the dark. So we can never know what God is up to, whether he's coming or going. I've decided that there's nothing better to do than go ahead and have a good time and get the most we can out of life. That's it. Eat, drink, and make the most of your job. It's God's gift. I've also concluded that whatever God does, that's the way it's going to be, always. No addition, no subtraction. God's done it, and that's it. That's so we'll quit asking questions and simply worship Him. Worship in holy fear. Whatever was it, whatever was, is, whatever will be, is, that's how it always is with God. <clears throat> God's testing us. Verse 16. I took another good look at what's going on. The very place of judgment, corrupt. The place of righteousness, corrupt. I said to myself, God will judge righteous and wicked. There's a right time for everything, every deed. And there's no getting around it. I said to myself regarding the human race, <clears throat> God's testing us, a lot of us, showing us, us up as nothing but animals. Human and animals come to the same end. Humans die, animals die. We all breathe the same air. So there's really no advantage in being human. None. Everything's smoke. We all end up in the same place. We all came from dust. We all end up as dust. Nobody knows for sure that the human spirit rises to heaven or that the animal spirit sinks into the earth. So I made up my mind that there's nothing better for us men and women and to have a good time in whatever we do. That's our lot. Who knows if there's anything else to life? Chapter 4. Heading is slow suicide. <clears throat> Had an algebra book we used to have to buy. Used, we bought used ones at noon. I bought a used one for algebra, elementary algebra. And uh, somebody had written on the edge of the book, The Slow Death. <laughs> this made me think of that. All right, chapter 4, verse 1. Next, I turn my attention to all the outrageous violence that takes place on this planet. The tears of the victims, no one to comfort them. The iron grip of oppressors, no one to rescue the victims from them. So I congratulated the dead who are already dead instead of the living who are still alive. But luckier than the dead or the living is the person who has never been, even been, who has never seen the bad business that takes place on this earth. Then I observed all the work and ambition motivated by envy. What a waste, smoke and spitting into the wind. The fool sits back and takes it easy. His sloth is slow suicide. One handful of peaceful repose is better than two fistfuls of worried work. More spitting in the wind. Why am I working like a dog? I turned my head and saw yet another wisp of smoke on its way to nothingness. A solitary person, completely alone, no children, no family, no friends, yet working obsessively late into the night, compulsively greedy for more and more, never bothering to ask, why am I working like a dog? Never having any fun. And who cares? More smoke, a bad business. It's better to have a partner than go it alone, share the work, share the wealth, and if one falls down, the other helps. But if there's no help, tough. Two in a bed warm each other. Alone, you shiver all night. <laughs> By yourself, you're unprotected. With a friend, you can face the worst. Can you round up a third? A three-strand cord isn't easily snapped. A poor youngster that with some wisdom is better off than an old but foolish king who doesn't know which end is up. I saw a youth just like this start, start with nothing and go from rags to riches. And I saw everyone rally to the rule of this young successor to the king. Even so, the excitement died quickly. The throngs of people soon lost interest. Can't you see it's only smoke and spitting into the wind? Let's go ahead and try for chapter 5, <clears throat> and we'll finish after that. Guys, uh, 
See if we can get through this. God's char God is in charge, not you. Chapter 5, verse 1. What's your step when you enter God's house? Enter to learn. That's far better than mindless offering, mindlessly offering a sacrifice, doing more harm than good. Don't shoot off your mouth or speak before you think. Don't be too quick to tell God what you think he wants to hear. God's in charge, not you. The less you speak, the better. Overwork makes for relentless, restless sleep. Overtalk shows you up as a fool. When you tell God you'll do something, do it now. God takes no pleasure in foolish gabble. Vow it, then do it. Far better not to vow in the first place than to vow and not pay up. Don't let your mouth make a total center of you. When, when called to account, you won't get by with, sorry, I didn't mean it. Now, let's back up. Don't let your mouth make a total center of you. When called to account, you won't get by with, sorry, I didn't mean it. Why risk provoking God to angry retaliation? But against all illusion and fantasy and empty talk, there's nothing like rock foundation. Fear God. A salary of smoke. Don't be too upset when you see the poor kicked around and just and justice and right vi violated all over the place. Exploitation filters down from one petty official to another. There's no end to it, and nothing can be done about it. But the good earth doesn't cheat anyone. Even a bad king is honestly served by a field. The one who loves money is never satisfied with money nor the one who loves wealth with big profits. More smoke. The more loot you get, the more looters show up. And what fun is that? To be robbed in broad daylight. Hard and honest work earns a good night's sleep, whether supper is beans or steak, but a rich man's belly gives him insomnia. <laughs> Here's a piece of bad, of bad luck I, it's, I've seen happen. A man hoards far more than wealth than, than far more wealth than is good for him, and then he loses it all in a bad business deal. He fathered a child but hasn't a cent left to give him. He arrived naked from the womb of his mother. He'll leave in the same condition with nothing. This is bad luck for sure. Naked he came, naked he went. So what was the point of working for a salary of smoke? All for a miserable, miserable life spent in the dark. Make the most of what God gives. After looking at the way things are on this earth, here's what I've decided is the best way to live. Take care of yourself. Have a good time and make the most of whatever job you have for as long as God get, gives you life. And that's about it. That's the human life. Yes, we should make the most of what God gives, both the bounty and the capacity to enjoy it, accepting what's given, and delighting in the work. It's God's gift. God deals out joy in the present, the now. It's useless to brood over how long we might live. And that's the end of chapter 5 in Ecclesiastes, folks. Uh, cheer, cheer you up a little bit. It's going to be a good day. Uh, we got some rain coming. It was cool last night. I went out uh, oh, before 8 o'clock. And it was really cool outside. It was 84, but it was cool, cloudy, wind blowing. So uh, let me let you go. I'm going to pray us out. And I uh, want you guys to have a fantastic day. Heavenly Father, love you. We love you for your word, Lord, for who you are. Uh, and I know there's some things in Scripture that seem uh, useless. But, Lord, a life lived for you is what we want. A life lived for you and to your glory. After your word, Lord, we seek after you. We know this is only the beginning and that the real life starts after this life. And that I've smoked and spitting in the wind, Lord. Pray you bless everyone in my hearing and everyone attached to them, Lord. Pray blessings, healing, and uh, lift up the hands of the downhearted, Lord. Give us peace, Lord, your peace that you paid for on the cross, Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.